This month's Business Central feature is something that as of late, it seems more and more people are interested in. So there's no better time to learn about Job Whip than the present. So Professor Ken, take it away. Sure. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what we want to talk about here is, um, you know, a module within Business Central called Jobs. So this is always one of the fun topics of discussion uh, that we have with our with customers and users is, um, you know, oh, I see that Business Central has a jobs module. Should we be using that? Right. So a lot of people call themselves job shops. Uh-huh. Um, and um, I'd say almost half the time, the fact that you describe yourself as a job shop means that you should be using the jobs module. And the other half of the time, it means you should be using the manufacturing module. Really? Right. Hmm. Right. Because a lot of people think of themselves, they'll say, well, we're a job shop because we're only going to make this item when we get an order for it. Right. And you go, okay, well, that could be just a made-to-order manufacturer, Mm -hmm. not necessarily a job shop. So there's always an interesting conversation about how companies see themselves or describe themselves. Um, And and ultimately, what it boils down to is um, kind of the, the structure of what you're building, right? So... um Someone who is, let's say uh, we build um, bicycles, right? Okay. But but we and so we have some we have some standard model bicycles that we build. But then we're also going to work with some companies that want us to manufacture bicycles for them, and we're going to change up a few things. In that model, I have a bill of material. Right, and it, mm-hmm. and it could be a multi-level indented structured bill of material, and and maybe a routing process that says these are the steps that we're going to go through to do this, and and I want to track labor and consume materials and, and so on. That very well could be just be manufacturing. It could also be done in the jobs module. So you go well, well, what the hell? How, yeah. how do I pick? How do I choose? <clears throat> What I would tell you is that um, there, there, there's a possibility that you could use either. However, um, the jobs module is really think of a job as a one-off, right? It's a unique project that we're going to be doing. Okay. Um, so a, a common example of that is someone who builds customized machines, Right. That's a good use of, of jobs where because each project is a one each machine is unique. I'm building it specifically for someone's or my favorite example is a, a custom motorcycle shop. Mm. Right. You come in with a design. You want this type of this gas tank that looks like this put on it. You want these types of handlebars. I'm going to be custom manufacturing those handlebars. I'm never going to do it again. Gotcha. Right, I, you've given me these specs, so I I don't want to. I'm not going to go through the process of building a detailed bill of material. Right? Why would I set up all these items and components? I'm gonna I'm gonna build them as I go through this job for this job. They're going to be consumed into the job, That's and I'm never going to do them again. Right? Right? So those are the those are the types of things that become jobs. The other example is where you're going to, you have a, you're going to be building something and it's, or, or maybe a group of something and it's going to take several months, right? And your, the way you're billing the customer or when you're billing the customer does not associate directly with when you're consuming all your expenses and costs. That's a distinguishing characteristic of a job shop? Correct. Yep. So let's say, let's because we're on a, a shot of Business Central and a beer, a good example of a job would be that that um, we're going to be custom building some new equipment for our newest brewery location. We're going to open up a brewery in um, uh, on the East Coast somewhere. And so we're going to need some custom design tanks, 
and pipelines and and uh, a, a bar, so some woodwork for a custom bar we're going to have built. We're going to need labor, right? We're going to have to send some of this stuff out for finishing maybe, right? We're going to have shipping costs because we're going to have to ship this. We're going to have to have it manufactured and then shipped to this location. That's a good example of a job, right? Or an office remodel maybe where I have to really? purchase a bunch of furniture, but then I have to hire painters, electricians, other types of service people. And when I'm going to do this work, I'm going to be, we're going to be customized, custom building this, this, this brewery. Um, we're going to want to collect a deposit from the customer, right? And this is where job and job whip work and process comes into play. Okay. So let's say that what, what's it going to cost us to build out this new brewery? Just say, I don't know, a million dollars. million dollars. That's going to be a nice brewery. Yeah, very nice. All right. Go big or go home. So it's going to be a million dollars. <laughs> so so our customer, right, has said, hey, Ken, uh, Ken and Michael, we want you guys to custom build. We need all this custom, uh, you know, brew tanks, yeah. pipelines, storage tanks, but also a kitchen, maybe some kitchen equipment and, and, and um, dining sure. room, yeah, furniture, dining room, exactly. bar yeah. stools, right. a bar, some counters and cabinets and everything. So we're going to we're going to set up a new job in Business Central. And we're going to associate this job with a customer who's having us build this for them. And we're going to say we 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 go through all these numbers and we estimate these are all the materials we're going to need. Right? Um and and I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to make this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to need um a thousand pounds of rolled steel for the tanks. And I'm going to need 150 two by fours and 104 by fours, right? The raw materials that I'm going to need is what I, what I put there as my order or the materials that I'm going to budget. And then all my estimated labor, uh, maybe some outside processes, some shipping costs. I put in all these different types of costs, travel expenses, for my team to go out and actually install this stuff yeah. there, airfare and hotel and all that, I can estimate okay. all those types of things as job costs on the job. And then what I tell the customers, hey, it's going to cost you a million bucks. And you go, yep, that they go, yep, that's great, a million bucks. And I say, all right, guess what? I need, I need a deposit from you for $250,000, right? Because I'm going to have to order all this stuff and I'm going to have to pay my people while we're producing it, um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for a deposit, two hundred fifty thousand. Sure. Well, in the normal world, and when if, if I'm doing sales invoices to a customer, when I invoice the customer, I have to bill them for something, right? And then I also accumulate. I, I book revenue. Well, in this case, I cannot book revenue. Just because I charged you two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a, on a deposit invoice, okay. so that's where job whip comes into play. Job whip says when I bill the customer for something that doesn't necessarily mean I'm recognizing revenue or costs. Instead, I have a, a method that I'm going to set that says how and when we want to book revenue and costs for this job. Okay, so. Um, right. So what I really would want to do is I'd want to take that $250,000 check. I deposit it and I, and I book it. It's a, it's a, um, it's like a prepaid, mm -hmm. uh, prepayment from the customer. Right. Some people call it like deferred revenue where I have to track that on my balance sheet that I have your money, but I can't yet book that revenue. Okay. So there, there's multiple methods that describe how and when I can go about booking that revenue. And that's where job whip comes into play. And that's why the jobs module can be so useful for these types of companies that are working on these projects. So for example, the, the, the simplest, I believe, uh, of the whip methods is called um, completed contract. Okay. So what completed contract says is, I don't care what you're billing the customer for this job. You can bill them 25%, 25%, 25%, right? Over, over three months or whatever that you're working on it. But we are not going to book any revenue 
or book any costs to our income statement until we complete the job, right? So that's the simplest. So as these, as these costs accumulate, I'm purchasing materials, I'm, a, I'm applying labor costs to the job, I'm paying for freight or travel expenses or engineering and design time. All those costs are being accumulated in what we call job whip on the balance sheet, like as an asset. And all my revenue that I've billed the customer is sitting on my balance sheet. And then once I finish the job, it says, okay, you're now complete with this job. Book all your billings as revenue and book all your costs as cost of goods sold. And do it in the same month so that it's it's all hitting in the same month. Okay. Right? Because the, the, alter, so, the alternative is if I've done it over four months, I don't want to see $250,000 in revenue over four months and maybe... One month has a $250,000 gain. The next month when I consumed all my materials, I lost 100000 I want all that to sit on the balance sheet and then recognize it at the end. So so is this, is this style more for then <clears throat> keeping track of financials or is it more for an organization type of uh, purpose? It's more for financials. Okay. Right? For financial reporting. Like how and when do we, are we able to recognize revenue on this job? And then the WIT method makes sure that you're using that process, but also then that you're matching the associated costs with that revenue in the same period. So it, it avoids this, this wide fluctuations right. in profitability month to month. Right. Right. Because it's different jobs. Yeah. So let's go to another, another WIT method. Another WIT method is, is percentage of completion. And this recognizes your revenue on the job proportionately based on the percentage of completion by looking at your total expected costs compared to your total actual costs. So, so does it matter which, I mean, can you use either or? Is it personal? Each job can have a different WIP method assigned to it. Okay. So you could have different types of jobs that have different WIP methods assigned. But in the end, is the ultimate financial reporting the same, I guess? Well, it, it depends month to month. If, let's say all depends. of these are four-month jobs for a million dollars, right? right? In, in, the, in the completed contract method, I'm going to book zero as cost and revenue for the first three months. Right. And in month four, I'm going to book Everything. a million in revenue and maybe, let's say, 800000 in costs. Right. So and then the next style will be 250, 250 over four months. So percentage of completion. So let's say like we're going to bill them a million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Our costs are going to be eight hundred thousand over four months. So we're gonna we're gonna make two hundred thousand, right, in profit. Okay. Now, let's say in this job I bill the customer for two hundred and fifty thousand for a deposit, and then I also incur. $400,000 in cost in month one. Okay. Which is half of all my costs. Right. Because I had to order, I had Everything to purchase front, yeah. all the stuff up front. And I had a bunch of labor too, mm -hmm. maybe, or other expenses. So under a, under a percentage of completion with method, what happens is it says, well, wait, you estimated your total um, costs were going to be 800000 in this month, you booked 400000 or 50% of your costs. So let's book 50% or 400000 as your cost. And then let's book a proportionate amount of your expected revenue as revenue awesome. or 500000 So in that month, I'll have 500000 in revenue and 400000 in cost. Sure, not in Right, so I'm matching my revenue and my, my profit margin of twenty percent mm -hmm. is going to stay twenty percent every month, and it's going to be based on the actual percentage of costs that I've incurred compared to my total. So, so my question is though, if the end result is the same for the different whip styles, right? How do you know which one to choose, or does it matter which one you choose, or just is it really based upon your accounting 
reporting style, I guess. Correct. It's based on those, your organizational decisions of how and when you want to recognize revenue. There are cases where gap, generally accepted accounting principles, dictate how and when you should, rec- when you can recognize revenue okay. or when you should recognize revenue, right? So there are, there are different Some industries that and different, are. different types of things that you could be selling through a job that dictate that you book, you book your revenue and costs differently. Okay. Um, but usually, um, most of them, it's a lot of times like an, 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 a piece, someone who's manufacturing a custom piece of equipment for someone, um, like a motorcycle or something, let's say, uh, or, or other device, uh, they're, they're going to book all the revenue upon shipment, which is really kind of completed contract. Okay. Right? So, um, but a construction industry, right? Maybe percentage of completion. So that says we've booked, we've incurred half of our costs on this job so far. So we should be able to book half of our revenue. Gotcha. Right. Makes sense. Um, another, just a th- final option. There's five total out of the box options. But oh, really? just to give one more example is um, one that um, is called um, cost of sales. I'm um, sorry, hold on. Um, I think it's sales value that says on this job, I want to book revenue based on when I bill it. But then also book my expected amount of cost of goods sold also in that month. So what again, it, it smooths out your profitability, right. right? So in my, let's go back to my example where we, in month one of this four month project for a million dollars in revenue and 800,000 in cost. I, I build the customer 250,000 and then I incurred 400,000 of actual costs. Under the, under the sales value, if I've billed 250, so I want to book revenue of 250. Now, I've actually reported 400,000 in costs, right? Mm-hmm. What it will do is it will see that I've, I've booked 250,000 in revenue, which is 25% of my total revenue. So it will say, well, let's only book 25% of your costs as cost of goods sold. So it will do an adjustment to book 200,000 in cost and then take the other 200,000 in cost and move it into my job whip account on my balance sheet. Wow. Pretty nice. So, and, yeah. So are these just the options you can choose? Per job, yes. Nice. Very nice. And we actually have people that are using this that change their job whip methods mid job. Really? Really. So it's month to month. So you book your whip entries for, for month one. Yeah. When you get to the end of month two, you're going to calculate new whip values. Well, what it does is it does actually two entries. It does a reversal of month one and the new booking of month two. So why switch though? You just don't like the way it's appearing um, on the- conservative accounting principles gotcha. sometimes dictate that you you use one method, um, but then if you become like where you're over budget, you switch. You switch so that you're recognizing those yeah. sooner. Makes sense. Those those losses sooner than rather than later. Mm-hmm. There are some legit reasons. There, I don't know. I'm you know I'm a failed accountant. There <laughs> there may be some illegitimate <laughs> reasons that people would change their wit methods in the middle of job. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but the thing is, you you can pick and choose job by job. Some jobs you may not even have a WIP method applied. In that case, Business Central is just going to book your actual revenue and costs based on when you post those invoices and post those costs. So you don't have to use WIP. Okay. You can just say, I just like on a service job, right? If you're just doing some a small service job, you may not have a WIP method. You may just say, we're just going to post these costs as they're incurred. And bill the customers when they're billed because yeah. it's small, it's immaterial. Right. It doesn't make sense to, to go through this whip method. Um, but on the other hand, I, I would say, well, yeah, but why not just use completed contract then? So when you complete the service job, you book all your costs, all your revenue in gotcha. the month that you complete it because you might cross over multiple months. Right. Right. You start the service job on the 28th of the month, incur some costs, and now you finish it on the 3rd of the next month. It, it doesn't hurt anything. And why I say that is because, and this is huge. This is really the, the 
piece de resistance, yeah. you know, <laughs> is when you get to the end of the month, let's say you have 150 open jobs. You get to the end of the month. Most of the customers we deploy on Business Central that are starting using jobs, I say, how do you book revenue today? How do you track all this job whip? They say, oh, I have a huge spreadsheet. At the end of the month, I have to get all these totals. I have to update the spreadsheet. It takes me two days. Oh. It takes me a week. We have to all get together. We have to talk to each other. We have to make decisions. We have to figure this out. And it takes a long time. In Business Central, you go into the job whip page. It pulls up all your jobs. You hit a button called calculate whip. It, it evaluates all the jobs, looks at the WIT method, looks at all of your actual costs, all of your expected costs and budgets and billings, and it calculates all these values for you. Wow. You have an opportunity to review them for reasonableness, right, and, and see the entries mm -hmm. that it made. If you like it, you hit a post WIP button. That's it. And you're done. And so we, you're going from days and week or whatever down to... 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that is the power of the, of the job wit method is, is when you get to the end of the month and it's, a, it's automated, it's accurate, right? Because the system's doing all the math and the formulas. Right. It's based on the data that's in the system. We do have the ability to change the wit method if we have to. Um, and also we have a full audit trail because it doesn't delete any of the prior month's WIP values. It leaves those there. It just reverses the previous month's ones in the current month and yeah. posts the new one. That's important. So I can still go back and say, what was my job WIP value as of December 31st, 2020? And I can nice. see a report that, that shows that. Pretty amazing. So this is a really powerful tool. Um, you know, if you're doing jobs, again, I, I like to think of the custom motorcycle shop as the yeah. perfect example of where you'd want to use jobs, right? I don't want to create a bill of material that, that shows all of the pieces and components that I'm going to put into that rear wheel assembly. Right. Right. I just want to say, hey, I need to order one of these tires. I need to order, I'm going to, I'm going to make a rim. I need to order um, mm -hmm. an axle or whatever. It's all for one-off product. So though. it's the I, I don't have a, a, a structured bill of material. Yeah. I just have all the pieces, a flat bill of material, if you will, or the pieces that I need to make it. And 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 the the job tasks describe the various tasks that I have to do to build that motorcycle. And those can be, I could just have maybe two or three tasks that describe the major elements of building that, or I could have a hundred tasks and I break it down very granularly into, you know, build, uh, me, uh, you know, um, design the, design the gas tank, right. another one to manufacture the gas tank, another one to paint the gas tank. So there's, there's really no rules of how detailed or how summary yeah. level you can build a job task. It's really just any level at which you want to be able to monitor your budgeted costs versus your actual costs. Now, licensing wise, you have to be a business central premium user, I'm assuming. Uh, jobs, I believe is included with the essentials. Oh, nice. Yep. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think we, we may have actually recorded a session um, maybe about a year ago, jobs versus manufacturing. Yeah, assembly orders versus production orders and whatnot, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, was that assembly? Okay, so assembly that was assembly not, orders yeah. versus production orders, yeah. right? So so let me just cover a couple things when you say, well, am I, you know, my jobs or am I, am I manufacturing? The great, the great debate, right? <laughs> this is. And this is really something that you should talk to someone who knows like what they're talking about, right? On, it's where your partner comes in, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, again, I mean, manufacturing is even if it's a if it's a custom type product that you're building. If someone is building a formal bill of material, and they're building the items and components and subassemblies that are going to be produced to make that finished good, that's where you're manu you're using manufacturing and production orders. 
If instead, like on the custom order cycle, you just say, hey, I need this much sheet metal. I need this much uh, paint. I need this much. I need a couple handles. I need a seat. I need this. I need that. And then the tasks are where I'm actually just, um, I guess, like virtually or like uh, building that together. That's where jobs comes into play. I don't want to have to go through the process of building all these multiple levels and indented bomb structures and creating routings and scheduling capacity. Gotcha. All that's manufacturing. And that's all in business central manufacturing. The jobs is where, again, it's a unique, I've got some engineering that's going to go on in there, custom designing some stuff. I'm going to make it, I'm going to sell it, and I'm, and I'm not going to do it again. Right. Want to give everybody a quick uh, thing to let them know what assembly would be then? So, yeah, well, we're okay. So, yeah, so now you're like, well, what about assembly? You just said assembly. Yeah. What the hell is assembly? <laughs> assembly point. is, um, think of that as like the term like that other people might be familiar with is like kidding. Assembly is a very simple process where I'm taking multiple components and I'm producing a finished good. And, and what I mean by that is a simple process is I can create an assembly order. Let's say I'm going to make um, uh, a thousand, uh, what, 12 packs of beer. Sure. Right. And so I'm going to create an assembly order for a thousand 12 packs. And I'm going to use a thousand boxes, a thousand labels, and 12,000 cans of beer. And I'm going to go do that process. And when I get done, I'm just going to hit post. And it's going to put 1,000 12 packs into inventory. It's going to consume 12,000 cans, 12,000 labels, 12,000 boxes. I don't have the ability to uh, uh, do shop floor labor time entry. I can't report scrap. I can't... Um, consume my quantities before posting my output. Those are things where manufacturing comes into play, right? So think of assembly orders, that simple process. I'm doing something. I'm going to tell it how many I made at the end, and it's going to put that into stock and back flush all my components. Now, do you see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of companies confuse, um, confuse, I guess, themselves with being a job shop or manufacturer or, or a manufacturer being a job shop? Or do they primarily know what they are? Because um, I know with assembly orders versus production orders, and, you know, manufacturing versus assembly, a lot of a lot of times you guys have had to go in there and, and yep. say, no, you're not really assembly. You fall more more into this category. Correct. And you see that a lot with I, job shops and manufacturing. Yeah. So what what we see is generally someone who says um, we're a job shop. Sometimes they are truly a job shop. They use jobs. Sometimes they're really like a made-to-order manufacturer. Gotcha. But you, what we don't see is someone saying, I need manufacturing software, and they end up being jobs. That doesn't happen because the people that think of themselves as manufacturers, they know they have structured bill of materials yeah. and routings and maybe doing some back flush, some manual flush, uh, capacity planning, MRP, yeah. all of those things are, are traditional manufacturing. And someone who's doing that, they know I'm a manufacturer. It's more more sometimes people say we're a job shop, and it turns out that they actually are a much better fit for manufacturing. Yeah. Right. It's Makes just sense. they're a manufacturer. It's just all their parts are custom created for one customer, right? Yep. So they think of themselves as a job shop. Because they're like, well, I only make a part, and that part is specific for one customer. And I'll say, well, yeah, but will the customer one maybe off. call you up and reorder it in the future? Yeah. And I go, well, yeah, they, yeah. Once we have the product, they'll reorder periodically. And I'll say, well, and then you'll produce them periodically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That that's manufacturing. So really, one of the main determining factors is whether or not your job shop is if it's a one-off product or whatnot. That's right. Yeah. Like your Orange County choppers. Motorcycle builders. Exactly. That type of thing. Yep. Yeah. And, and not to get too much off topic here, but I've been seeing a lot lately where people have talked about how they've used MRP as an ERP. Do you see that a lot or no? Um, well, what I see in the small to mid-size segment is 
Um, and I, I, I don't necessarily view this as a, as a negative, by the way, is companies that that really can't effectively run MRP. Uh-huh. And what I mean by that is that they're 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 a small to mid sized business. They need agility, and they need to be flexible and change the plan today. Right? The customer calls up today, changes their their delivery date from from tomorrow to the next day. We adapt. That's what we do, right? It's it's one of right. it's one of a small to mid sized company's strengths right. is that flexibility, customer service, adaptability. Well, that plays havoc on an MRP where you're building a production schedule for a week, yeah. and you're and you're locking it or freezing it, right? They call it freeze a frozen schedule, yeah. right? It 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 it's in a more. small company that needs to be nimble and quick. It doesn't really work that well. Um, yeah. So you see, that's where you see things like other reports that they're running or other ways that they're kind of working maybe around uh, the system to get stuff expedited or done. Um, and again, I don't think it's a negative. I think it's it's part of a company's strength. It's just that, you you, you know, you have to understand, you can't, it's like having your cake and eat it too, right? Yeah. I want the system to build the plan for me and structure it. Well, fine. But you can't then set that plan and then an hour later say, you know what? I don't want to follow that plan. Can you work on this right now? Because the customer just called and they're pissed. Yeah. Right? So let's do this. That, that You just blew thought. up your whole exactly. plan because yeah. there's so many dependencies, right, on that task that I was supposed to have done by 11 so it could move to the next operation. And, 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 and you have this – the impact is huge. So – um, but yeah, we've been seeing a ton of action though on, on companies that, that are job based organizations interested in Business Central. And, and the, the flexibility and ease of setting up a job and making it a, a very simple structure combined with the ability of, u- of using the WIT methods to give you flexibility and to, to build a customer whenever you want under whatever terms you want that doesn't but and then have the system manage all the revenue recognition and cost recognition for you in a matter of minutes that's right. huge yeah. right and that's that's where it really shines it's like why are we doing all this work right well yeah. that's why because at the end of the month you have reliable numbers that are automatically calculated for you right that you can depend sounds on. good sounds really good so well thank you professor ken for the uh the jobs uh, schooling. There will be a quiz uh, in Let's the next segment. It. As long as I can ask questions. <laughs> maybe we, we will do an online quiz, maybe. <laughs> there you go. All right, next up, we're going to talk about uh, three new, brand new Microsoft Business Central apps that will be coming to App Source shortly. So stay tuned. <laughs> 